Hi guys, today I thought I'd do a quick video on the Slack API and how you could use the Slack API to get notified of changes in your environment directly into your Slack channel. It seems nowadays everyone's on Slack, so why not notify the whole team if services are down, if your server is down, or any sort of storage solution might be having issues to automate the task of getting notified with a simple Perl script, with the Slack API, and using Nagios XI. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to get started. The first thing you want to do is open up Slack, either through the web interface or the locally installed app. Um, and then you're going to take a look at which workspace you want these notifications to go to, depending on what project you might be working on, what team you're on. Now I'm going to go to this Slack site, and this is actually going to add the configuration and integration into that workspace. And if you notice on the top left there, it's my workspace name and I have that selected. If you click the drop down from there, you could select alternate workspaces if you're not in the correct one. I'm going to add the integration and this is going to give us these instructions. Now these instructions are good if you're using Nagios Core. If you're using, using Nagios XI, I wouldn't necessarily follow these instructions. It gets a little um, mixed up. So go ahead and just follow the instructions I'm about to give you instead. You're going to want to log into your Nagios server. And we're going to be installing some applications we need just to um, make sure our scripts run correctly. So just follow these commands. Yes, uh, some Perl libraries and um, some SSL uh, with Perl so it's encrypted. Um, most of the time you might already have these installed, but just go ahead and run this yum command, the yum install minus y and the name of the packets, packages, and go ahead and install it. And it'll install if it's not already there. Now let's go into the Nagios directory. We're going to cd into user local Nagios lib execute. And we're going to issue this wget command that is going to download um, the Nagios Perl script necessary to do an API call to Slack to post a message to the channel you need. So we're going to download this file. We're going to change the permission slightly on it. We're just going to give it um, execute permission so that the script can run in a Linux environment. You can also make sure the owner is Apache and the group is Nagios, just like all the other scripts listed as well. Now we're going to go into the file. You can use VI or whatever is your favorite text editor in Linux. And we're going to make a few modifications to the file. Specifically, we're going to change the channel um, that it's going to send the message to, as well as the token required for it to authenticate to allow that the message be posted. So we're going to go ahead and search for opt and opt underscore domain. And we're going to add the channel name and then the token provided. And the tokens provided was given when you went to the link in the beginning and you did the Nagios integration. So if you scroll further down, it does have the option of this um, randomly generated token. So we're gonna copy that and we're gonna add it to our file. So this is what it's allowing us to authenticate and say that we are an actual valid user to that's allowed to post a message. So we're just gonna paste that right in there. We're going to save this, and then we're able to test it on the command line to make sure our script works before we add it in to Nagios XI to start posting messages to our Slack channel. We're going to go ahead and test it out. This is pre-configured to send it to a channel called Hosts, um, but it can be modified if you go back to that script. You can actually modify that. So I'm creating the channel host. If you don't have the channel that exists, then you will get an error message when you try to send the message, obviously, to the Slack. So here we are on the command line, and this is given in the, it will be in the comments, this command with all the fields, and you can just modify um, maybe the channel if you change the channel on your workspace in Slack, and you can go ahead and leave the rest up. This is really just for a test to make sure that our packages are installed correctly, it has the Perl modules and needs to be able to run this. And if everything's successful, I should be able to go back to my Slack and go to host channels um, and go ahead and check out if I got a new message. And there it is. It's my test post is up. So now if there's any sort of issue and you have it configured to notify Slack when we go and do our Nagios XI configuration, it will appear similar to this. You can specify the host or the service that is down and then anyone in that workspace would be notified of the new message posted. So it's really nice for your teams that are working heavily in Slack, who 
who are always in there messaging that you guys can share comments about services or servers that are down. Now that we know our Perl script is working correctly, we can go ahead and configure our Nagios XI service to actually use that plugin to notify. So we're going to go into configuration and go to core configuration and we're going to add a few things. First we're going to start off by uploading, or I'm sorry, creating a command. So the command is going to be using the script we uploaded to our lib execute in the Nagios folder. So we're going to create a new command and you can call it um, anything you like. So I'm calling it Slack host notification handler. This is what's recommended in the documentation. I'll put this in the notes below and we're going to add the similar command that we written on the command line where it specifies what host, what service, um, if it's okay status, if it's down or if it's up. So it's putting in all the notification and the variables used in Nagios to explain what service is having issues or server is having issues. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to add one more service. So we're adding a host notification, but now we want to add a service notification. So we call it Slack Service Notification Handler. And again, the command will be pretty similar, except instead of notifying when hosts are down, it's services. So if um, your web services are down or MySQL or database services are down, it'll focus more on that. And we'll go ahead and save that. And again, these will be in the notes. So we'll save this and then we'll apply it. If there's any syntax errors, when you go to apply it, you could always it'll shoot out an error message and go back and modify it. Or you can go back to a previous snapshot of Nagios and go back to one of a stable configuration. So there's really no danger in doing this at all. It's really easy to go back. So we're going to apply configuration. And if everything's correct in the syntax, you should get this applied successfully message. Now we're going to go under admin and we're going to add uh, manage users. And this is saying what users allowed to send these notifications. So we're going to add create a user and we're going to call it Slack. And then you set whatever password you like. And then later on we're going to use this user and say this user runs certain commands. So when a message, for example, if a service is down or a server is down, usually you email a user. In this case, this user is not sending out email. It's running a command and the command is connecting to our Slack API. So that's essentially why we're creating this. It could be a regular user account. It doesn't ha necessarily have to be admin, but you can create it as an admin account if you like. It is not required though for this to work. So once we add the user, we're going actually going to go through and go to more advanced settings and make some modifications there. So this user then runs the scripts, the commands we just created. For the user to be able to run a certain commands, the, the commands we created has to be listed and classified as miscellaneous. So if we go back to commands, and we find the two commands we created, and we're just going to make a quick modification. So this is Slack host notification handler. We're going to make it command type miscellaneous. And the same thing for the Slack service notification handler. We're going to make it miscellaneous. So now when we go in and we manage our user, we could find the command listed and we're going to go ahead and apply our changes that we just created. And now we can go in and go into our user and do state what command they should run. By clicking on contacts again and we go back to our Slack contacts. Now we go to alert settings and we are able to pick our commands. So we're able to pick our host commands as well as our service commands. So we're going to select our Slack host configuration and Slack service configuration you know, respectively. So once we have both configured, we go ahead and click Save. And now, anytime you associate this user with a notification um, for a service or a host, it will run those commands. The last part is associating a host or service with that user. So I'm just going to select a host I know is down currently, just so it starts sending out notifications to my Slack channel. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the host. Under alert settings, I could do manage contacts. I'm going to go ahead and add Slack to my one of my users assigned. And I'm going to save the setting. Now after this, you should just wait a few minutes and you should start seeing messages appear on your Slack channel. Now go ahead and make sure you have to apply the configuration. You could also do this in bulk. So if you want to do a large number of hosts or services, there is the option of bulk modification tool. 
that we can associate a wide number of hosts at the same time to the Slack user. So by clicking bulk modification tool under core config manager, we can click on add contacts and then select the Slack user. Now you're also able to select which host and which services you would like to add this user to. So you can go ahead and select which host selectively. I selected all my hosts and all my services, but of course um, you might not want this. Maybe you have just Nagio services for a specific project with a specific team on your workplace Slack. Um, and you only want a certain number of people being notified. So maybe you'll choose one that only a few people are part of the Slack workspace. Um, but either way, you could go ahead and save this. It'll add it to 30 services and three hosts. Now, if everything works correctly, you should be able to apply your configuration and start receiving your notifications in your Slack channel. Within a few minutes, you should be getting notifications of which services and a host are down, if any. Depending on your settings, it can notify you as often or as delayed as you would like. So since this is a shared Slack channel, I wouldn't recommend sending notification every five minutes, maybe once an hour until the service or host is brought back up. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Definitely check out the Slack API and get notified directly into your Slack channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.